Good morning to Wall Street Media. I'm Cynthia. I'm here with Doug, and we'll help you make money in the stock market with information you will not find anywhere else. Hey, exclusive stuff, right? Exclusive CEOs stuff. What do you got from for us? San Francisco from JMP. Super cool conference. They have great stuff. Um, and we've got two CEOs. I just come for the tidbits. You do? Yeah. No, you come in for the videos. Ah, I come in for you. Oh. Anyway, so. <laughs> I love Cynthia. That's enough touchy feely. Let's get on with it. So, should we get into our first video? Yeah, super cool guy named Doug okay. from Pennsylvania. Great. <laughs> Doug Ale <laughs> Mr. Alexander. Oh, did you say Doug? All right. Doug Alexander, Managing Director of Internet Capital Group, ICGE, discusses their business model as well as hot companies they have been increasing owner just ownership stakes in. Let's see it. Come on, Doug. Our model is very simple. We acquire significant ownership stakes in private uh, SaaS companies, online marketing companies, again, average ownership is at 46%. We help those companies grow by providing capital uh, and operating expertise. We focus very narrowly on the markets, uh, 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 those two markets. We feel we have deep expertise in both areas, and our entrepreneurs will tell you we add significant value through uh, capital strategy, helping them build management teams, helping them develop relationships that can help them succeed. And then ultimately, our model is to capture value from uh, our holdings, either through consolidating them within our financial statements, uh, doing a strategic sell, sale, merging them with another company or an IPO. Our highlights from the first quarter, our companies, our eight core companies grew 29% year over year from Q107. Uh, our guidance is 25%. So we're, we are very comfortable. We'll exceed that number for the year. And we deployed 27 million of capital primarily to increase ownership in our existing companies. So we'll deploy capital really one of two ways. Our first priority is to do it in our existing companies uh, where we can increase our ownership because our view is these are, these are companies we know. And if we can get more ownership as these things grow, that's a fairly easy way to build value. And uh, the second way is to invest in new platform companies and bring them into the portfolio. We increased our ownership stake in Starsight, one of our hottest companies, from 26 to 32 percent. We're by far the largest shareholder. We increased our ownership in another very hot company, Channel Intelligence, uh, to nearly half the company. And Go Industry, our public company on the AIM, is, is uh, the dominant player in Europe in its space. DoveBid, which is a TPG company, was the dominant player in the U.S. We, we provided financing to acquire DoveBid to create a strong global player. So we, we have high hopes for uh, the company post that merger. Stop the job with Make some money. Hey, I like him. Um, but these guys, what they do is, yeah. and, and he really emphasized this, you know, uh, it gives you a chance. They're like a venture capital fund for right. a variety of internet companies, right? But this gives you a chance where you can monetize your money, move it in and out, rather than having to wait, and also because they're public, right? Right. Um, and also, you get exposure to a variety of different ones at different stages. So, like Metal Storm, I saw filed for an IPO. That's one of their companies. They're going to be raising $80 million, right? Um, and it gives you a lot of unique opportunities that, right. that gives it a distinct advantage, you know, uh, when they're out talking to a company, right? An entrepreneur that has a small company that might be talking to other venture capitalists, right? right? They can quickly monetize it by offering him, you know, shares of their stock right. rather than saying... We're going to inject money like the traditional VC route, but it's going to, it could be three years, could be five years until we take you public until we get any sort of a payoff. Right. You know, like so that gives them a good advantage when they're going so in and bidding against others. Yeah. Sure. And they're from Pennsylvania, and it's Doug. I mean, my God, the stars are lined up, Cynthia. Okay. So now going on to the <laughs> next one. Just admit it. Just say yes. Ah, uh, Stephen Springsteel. Right? That's meant to be, because it's, you know, you got Spring Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Steven's my boyfriend. <laughs> Steven Spring Steel, CEO of Coordinate Software. Coordinate. Thank you. Coordinate Software. C R D. C H R. Okay, great. Let's, let's go. <laughs> Steven Spring Steel, CEO of Coordinate Software, or ticker C H R D, discusses the company's business model as well as. Um, second quarter financial and investment highlights, which include recent transactions with leading Turkish banks. 
our model is we get, we get into a customer, and the initial ASP for what we sell is about $1 to $5 million of license in first-year maintenance and support. Get established in a business unit and then grow into other business units. And what this slide depicts here is, so far we have 86 customers that have bought either a million dollars or more from us, and we had three that over time have bought over $40 million from us. So it just shows the value of what we do, that once we get established in a customer, we grow into other divisions, and they leverage off of that initial implementation because of the, uh, the reuse capabilities associated with our SOA uh, technology. And again, if you look at the three vertical markets in there, these are all brand name companies uh, that you would very easily and readily recognize. If you look at Q2, it was a tough quarter for us on, on, on the bookings and revenue side. Uh, we, we had uh, financial services in North America, and to a lesser extent, we saw some slowness in the U.K., and that really affected us. Uh, we were still able to break even, make a little money on a non-GAAP basis, um, and then we, we put some things in place at the beginning of the year that will bode well for us at the end of the year, and I'll talk about that in a second. We have a backlog of $93.5 million, so our backlog is comprised of Maintenance and support, it's surprised of professional services, and it's surprised, uh, uh, comprised of licenses that we can recognize over the next few years. And then without going through these investment highlights, let me just uh, talk about for a second here the activities that we put in place at the beginning of the year, recognizing that the, our environment that we're typically used to selling into has changed. We've started to expand into some other emerging markets. We have presence in, in Eastern Europe. We're expanding into areas such as Russia, uh, as well as India, Australia, Spain. And that was evidenced by we have some early wins with ING Poland, large insurance company in Poland. And we also have some uh, nice wins with both the number one and number two bank in Turkey, most recently the number two bank, which is Akbank in Turkey. So we've planted a lot of seeds at the beginning of the year so that we can continue our string of uh, growing the company. If you look historically, for the last, we've been profitable for five quarters in a row. And if you go over the last seven quarters, we've had at least one mega deal in every quarter, or in five of the last seven quarters. And a mega deal for us is a transaction of $10 million or more. So we still continue to knock down big transactions. And we're back. And we're back. And who was that? That was Cordian Software. For who? JMP. What's his name? Steven Springsteel. <laughs> Steven Springsteel. I'm just a quiz here. It's like Springsteen. <laughs> you think you're doing your word rum? I do. Um, I like my word rummy. So I got some um, some more notes from them. If you want to hear those? I want to hear them. Okay. Tell us about JMP. JMP, good stock pickers, and they're having a great conference in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. We'll have more for it today. Um, did I mention to you that we need you for eight hours today? Um, because it's West Coast time. Um, and I, I know that you're such a good team player that we can count on you. Um, in any event, uh, they, they have this growth research conference. Right. And it's, it's exciting because they cover so many different sectors. So many of the times it's just in one sector. Right. And these guys have, have – the next one you're going to do is Cisco, um, so very big companies. And they also have very small companies. They even have some private companies like Kayak.com kayak that hasn't come public yet. And they're in, like, they have some uh, biotech and some pharma. Kayak is great. Technology. I use that to get um, some tickets. Yeah, well, that's what we use Do you sometimes. use tickets? Oh, yeah. yeah. Kayak. Um, <clears throat> and so they're in all different sectors. Right. And luckily, we have highlights from some of the presentations. Very good. Here we go. Do you want to tell people where they can see the whole thing? Uh, yeah. Here it is. We've got wsw.com slash webcast slash jmp6. Again, this wsw.com. Slash webcast slash JMP6. <laughs> I was good the first one, wasn't I? You, you were a lot better on the first okay, one. Okay, anyway, here we go. Jonathan Chadwick, Senior Vice President and Corporate Controller of Cisco Systems, or CSCO, um, discussed plans to expand virtualized services, particularly the goal of cutting travel spending by 75% by implementing more video conferencing. Yeah. Which is important since we have some information about American Airlines today that makes me very unhappy. But you love flying. I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> James Caldor, CFO at Great Wolf Resorts, or cleverly named WOLF, which means wolf, discussed the expansion of existing resorts to include revenue-generating amenities like Starbucks, mini-golf, 
and Magic Quest, as well as focus on international licensing and branding. By the way, I know that we've said so much bad things about Starbucks. I bought a whole bunch of Starbucks. I think they're going to make a turnaround. I'm, I'm buying their sandwiches every day. Like, they have this amazing egg salad sandwich that I buy every day. I bought a whole bunch of Starbucks. I had a couple oh, thousand good. shares. Well, every day when I, I make you richer. Good. Edward Lampier, uh, CEO of I think I don't appreciate San Gamo Bioscience. Sangamo Biosciences, or ticker SGMO, discussed trials for ALS, cancer, and HIV drugs taking place this year. Okay. One well, more. One more. That's you want good more? One. I want the next one. I want I more. I wanted you to you. hold off. Okay. I want more. Benjamin Gong, <clears throat> vice president of the Gong Show. No, sorry. Benjamin Gong, vice president, finance, and treasurer of Intuitive Surgical, or ticker ISRG, discuss Da Vinci surgical systems use and more hysterectomy procedures, with 150% growth in sales to this market expected this year. Yeah, these guys do super cool stuff, robotic surgery, right, remote surgery. I'm excited. You know who you look like? Flipper. No, you look like the little, the little monkey that has his drum. I, I am like the little monkey on here, and I just follow orders from you, Cynthia. Oh, very good. <laughs> day. Anyway, thanks for joining us. We're here every day at Wall Street Media. You We're going to have tons us. more, tons more. We have t actually we have a lot today. We have a lot today, so please join us we again. We have Cynthia for eight hours. We have Cynthia for eight hours. If you look below, if you got feedback, um, please leave us some. Tell us what oh, we're doing we right. We'll tell us what we're doing wrong. Okay, we'll talk about the feedback later. We have a lot of shows to go. I know. Okay, you can find us at www. Look what I've done. I've done it again. You can find us at www.wsmco.com. And again, leave feedback. We'll see you again soon. Thank you. Say goodbye, Doug. Goodbye, Doug.